Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now here in my hands, this is a small section of a target from the company Infinite Defense. This is an Infinity Target and in a prior video, I took a look at a full-sized Infinity Target, got into detail, took it to the range, put it through the paces, and I've come to greatly enjoy these. Now, I've gone through... I'd say a little bit of an experiment. I've kind of been playing around a little bit to see what more can I do with these to subdivide the targets, get some more maybe subdivided little sections that I can shoot at for different types of practice, but also brightening things up, adding a little bit of high vis. Now, I'm gonna premise this entire video by saying it's very clear to me why the Infinity targets are white and black. The rubber underneath is black they basically coat them in white. It makes it a very stark contrast, white to black, easy to see. But in today's video, I did want to play with that a little bit. I wanted to try to understand it a little bit more. I wanted to see, could I play with it a little bit and get some other results? So I've done a couple of different experiments. I take you through it, and then I bring this out to the range, get some practical use. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Infinite Defense who did provide these products for review. So today's video, pretty straightforward. What I'm really looking for out of this Infinity Target is what I would call stark contrast. Now, granted, black and white is a pretty good stark contrast, but at distance, it may be just a little bit hard to see. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes at distance, even with white targets, it's hard to see the little hole punched through, even if it's sort of call it that black background. So what I'm looking to do today is kind of play around a little bit. Now, these infinity targets are fantastic a great option but i'm wondering can i make these sort of more contrast can i improve the overall visibility not just for close up but at distance and what i thought i would do is a little bit of a painting project answer now as i get into this little bit of an experiment if you've ever seen high vis targets generally speaking they tend to have a dark surface with a bright color underneath and if you do a little bit of research, you'll see that these can be made a number of different ways. Now, I'm going to premise this by saying this is absolutely not going to work, but I did want to try this and I did want to rule it out. So the first thing I'm doing is coating this in a bright yellow paint, and then I'm going to cover it entirely with black. Now, again, as I mentioned, a typical high-vis target tending to be bright colors underneath, with a dark surface and with that you'll see when people tend to make these they do use something like a packing tape over the bright color and then put the darker color in the black on top again keep in mind that's not what i'm doing but i did want to rule this out so at this point you'll see a couple of coats of yellow i did find that i was able to leverage a hair dryer in between coats which greatly reduced the overall drying time and actually reduced the drying time and overall prep for this project to a mere matter of minutes. In about 15 minutes time, I had this completely coated in the yellow and in the black and overall gave me the opportunity to get this out to the range. Now I was shooting 22 at the range. I did have an opportunity to get out there really get a number of shots down range and i put about 50 shots on this target about 20 of them grouped up pretty tight and at this point you can see the results and so now back from the range now i know i didn't have any shooting footage but i can tell you i was with my wife shooting some rifle some 10 22 greatly enjoying it and i really just wanted to devote my time to her and not filming but you can see the results and here you'll notice the black on black the yellow not really showing up too well at all and that's kind of part of this experiment. And you can clearly see why the targets are typically white. And at this point, you know, you can see that it doesn't really show up all too well. Now, the one thing that I can tell you is this is about 20 shots of 22 grouped very tight. 
and you can see how nicely these targets do hold up. And as I flip it over and taking a look at the exit wounds, you can see it is clustered and there's a little bit of blowout, but all things considered, not too bad. So what I'm going to do now, and again, continuing to experiment to see what kinds of things I can do with these targets. I've since bought some really bright, like neon and fluorescent paints that are not only fluorescent in the daytime, but they actually glow at night. And I think this would be really cool to see if these colors do offer a high vis experience. And even more so if you were in low light conditions or even something where there was like a black light or in reality, if you're hitting these targets uh, with your weapon light, well, I think chances are it should light up pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get the primer. I'm gonna paint this all white again. And once it dries, I'm gonna pick four of these colors. I'm gonna break this into quarters and then we'll get back out to the range and we'll give it a try and see how it works out. And now you can see nice and evenly coated. Now what I'm gonna do is break this literally into quarters and then paint the colors. So as we take a look, I got yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, and green. All of these kind of glow a slightly different color, but as we crack this open here, you will notice that these colors are quite bright. And so I'm gonna to try to use sort of like a differentiation here so we can see which work the best. Now I'm thinking certainly yellow, orange, green, and let's go with what they're calling red. And we'll use these four colors, again, breaking this into quarters, and we'll see how this goes. Rough layout here, nothing too technically close, but I do like to take my time and just do a decent job. So you can see leveraging a Sharpie here, chisel point, nice thick black line. So this is just gonna kind of break this into the quarters. And again, not a whole heck of a lot to it, but pretty straightforward, which now should be pretty straightforward. Now I don't need a ton of paint, but I do want to get this nicely coated. And I did find, as you see, uh, leveraging the hair dryer does work very well to dry in between coats and then really speed up the process. So as I work along here, again, it doesn't need to be perfect. This is just a trial, but I will do a number of coats leveraging that hair dryer in between just to shorten the drying time in between coats. And so after about 15 or some odd minutes of work, not too bad, got this nicely coated. Now this is mostly dry, again, using the hair dryer to dry in between coats. I put three coats of each one of the colors and you can see it's pretty well covered, all things considered. Now I did manage to leave this corner, uh, I would say more towards that original white as sort of a control so that as I use this, we can compare how the white does contrast versus the colors. And so at this point, this is looking pretty good, all things considered. But what I'm hoping is going to be really fun is the fact that this completely lights up. Now, granted, at this point, I am using a black light, but as I turn it off, well, you see it does have a glow. So at night, this should kind of glow up or as it's getting darker and you don't necessarily need a black light to get this to glow. It will literally do this with any sort of light. Like, for example, here you have my TLR 8 sub. And as I get this turned on here, well, yeah, it's beaming and it's bright, but you'll notice you can nicely see the different colors. You can pick up on the laser. And then again, once I turn the light off, well, it still has a nice glow. Granted, I do have some real soft lights in here, but for the most part, this is the target itself glowing. It's really cool, and I think it could potentially enhance your overall shooting experience, especially in low light conditions. And so at this point, there's only one thing left to do, and that's get this out to the range. I'm kind of looking forward to this. And at this point, I'm really starting to get somewhere. I'm very happy with the overall visibility of this target. 
Now I did have this in a couple of different setups. I'm shooting a nine millimeter carbine at about a distance of both 10 yards and 20 yards throughout this test. Now you can see the difference in the colors, the white being that stark white and black contrast, the standard contrast coming from Infinite Defense. The yellow, the orange, and the green, the high viz. Now I feel like each one of these has a bit of a benefit. The yellow, definitely very bright. The orange, very bright, and the green, very bright against the background. It is helping me to get some basic target acquisition from distance, and that is a very, very good thing. And on top of that, the ability to clearly see my shots, no problem. I do have to say, I feel as though my ability to see the shots is about as good on the high vis as it is on the white. So this does give me some thoughts about what I might be able to do with this type of target, what I might be able to do to experiment, and the bonus being, as you take a look at the infinite defense targets, even in the wind, these are very stable, and especially compared to other high vis options. And so now back from the range, very cool. Now, again, you saw a whole bunch of different ideas all sort of blended together here. And again, I go back to one of my original statements from the intro where you can clearly see why the white and black combination has been used by Infinite Defense. But I do wanna say, I think these high vis options are also awesome. It's gonna be a little bit of maintenance to get this touched up again but it's a bit of a process, it's a bit of a project. It's quite frankly for me, just a little bit of chill time, put on a, you know, sports or put on some good TV, put on some good music, touch this up, tune it up, no problem, ready to go again. I kinda like doing that with my gear. It's almost the same as cleaning my guns. Is it a pain in the neck? Well, a little bit, but you know what? I kind of like it too. So touching up the targets is just going to be fun and enjoyable. And I do want to say that with the 9mm, not too bad in terms of the overall damage. Now, of course, this is a small target. And of course, everything was lumped up pretty tight. The exit wounds here, reasonable, not too bad, all things considered. It does have a little bit of blowout in the back but it's not a big deal. And all in all, at this point, this is still plenty good. I have a ton of life left in this, so I could touch this up, no problem at all. And what that does for me is it shows me that I can take my full-size target, and there's a ton of space off the main body. There's a ton of space off to the sides where I could really play with it, subdivide it, and get a ton of other little target space. Subdivided target space of different colors, different sizes, different intended uses, and I love that about this. And even furthermore, this is a concept that you could use on their different sizes. They have some targets that are very blank and plain. It gives you just an idea that you could absolutely experiment with this, and so for me, much more to come. I will probably lay out my larger targets in a couple of different ways, take advantage of the fact that I have some of the paint now, and just enjoy it. Have some fun and really get some great use out of my Infinity targets. And so again, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Infinite Defense who did provide these for review. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear that goes with it. So from sleep systems, shelter systems, knives, axes, backpacks, flashlights, you name it, that's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.